The internet is a worldwide system of computer network connecting millions of computers. Hello, my name is Blair, your science teacher. Today's episode is about the internet. Users from one computer can communicate and access data with permission from other computers. The internet was brought many changes to our lives. It has changed the way we live and do things. The internet has impacted almost every sector of industry in the world. Almost everybody is available online. The internet is a global system of interconnected computer networks that uses the internet protocol suit or the TCP or the IP to communicate between network and devices. It is network of networks that consist of private, public, academic, business and government networks of local to global scope linked by a broad array of electronics, wireless, and optical networking technology. The Internet carries a vast range of information, resources, and services, such as the interlink hypertext documents and application of the World Wide Web, electronic mails or emails, telephones, and the file sharing. What are computer in daily lives? The answer are the access to information, communication, promote learning and social network. In the accessing of information like books, newspaper, live breaking news, smart TV, live stream for radio and TV. For communication, we have chats emails, short messaging services, social feeds, and smart mobile devices, also known as the smartphones and tablets or mini computers. To promote learning, we have the online encyclopedia known as Wikipedia, Linux, smart board, and for social networks like the Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Mastodon, YouTube, Odyssey, Peertube, and so on. Here's what I found in my research. We have the co-founder of the internet explaining how the internet was born. This may be interesting. This video what is a is, creative comment, so internet? let's watch. The internet is where you ask a question. What is the internet? Most people don't have any idea where the internet came from, and it is, doesn't matter, they don't need to. It's sort of like asking who invented the ballpoint pen, or the flush toilet, or you know the zipper. These are all things we just use every day, and we don't even think about the fact that one day, somebody invented them. So the internet is just like that. Many, many years ago, in the early 1970s, my partner Bob Kahn and I began working on the design of what we now call the internet. It was a result of another experiment called the ARPANET, which stood for Advanced Research Projects Agency Network. It was a Defense Department research project. Paul Barron was trying to figure out how to build a communication system that might actually survive a nuclear attack. So he had this idea of breaking messages up into blocks and sending them as fast as possible in every possible direction through the mesh network so we built a what eventually became a nationwide experimental packet network and it worked is anybody in charge of the internet the honest answer is well nobody and it may be another answer is everybody the real answer is that the internet is made up of an incredibly large number of independently operated networks what's interesting about the system is that it's fully distributed there's no central control that's deciding how packets are routed or where pieces of uh, network are built or even who interconnects with whom these are all business decisions that are made independently by the operators they are all motivated to assure that there is end-to-end -end connectivity of every part of the network because the utility of the net is that any device can communicate with any other device just like you want to be able to make phone calls to any other telephone in the world. There's nothing like this that has ever been built before. The idea that what you know 
might be useful to somebody else or vice versa is a very powerful motivator for sharing information. By the way, that's how science gets done. People share information. So this is an opportunity for people to think up new applications, maybe program them as apps on a mobile phone, maybe become part of the continued growth of the infrastructure of the network to bring it to people that don't have access to it yet, or just make use of it on a day-to-day -day basis. You can't escape from contact with the internet, so why not get to know it and use it? How about the future of the internet? Here's another Creative Commons video from the World Economic Forum. When the web started 25 years ago, it was uh, the only its openness to people innovating on it. But now when we look back over 25 years, almost half the people in the world are using the web. But I think some of us initially had uh, big hopes that the internet is going to lead to a society which, in which inequality fades away because everybody has got the same possibilities, everybody has got the same advantages, just starting off connecting themselves to the net. Guess what? That hasn't happened. In fact, here we are 25 years after the first web page and a lot of nonprofits, a lot of governments are realizing that uh, we have a crisis of inequality. And so every time people put more powerful things on the web, we actually increase the gap between the haves and the have-nots. Things need to be said explicitly for the internet because the internet gives you a certain power that you wouldn't have had before. As people have started to think about access to the internet more as a right, then that begs the question, okay, should we have a bill of rights for the internet? Snowden changed that dramatically by putting those revelations onto the table that it really started the conversation. I think we're indebted to Edward Snowden for actually introducing that material uh, in a way that I think nothing else could have done that. There have always been forces to try to control the internet. When you're a government of a country, it's very tempting to want to govern the internet within your country. Trouble is, it doesn't work because the internet is not a thing of countries. You can certainly, you can put in barriers, you can put in firewalls, but as you do that, suddenly your country, your people, your entrepreneurs, your teachers have all lost their voice. We have to be reactive when we realize that, whoa, actually this country or this company has stepped over the mark and we have to immediately take to the streets with placards and shouting. So in 10 years' time, we'll see certain natural progressions, we'll see the internet speeds be very high, so it'll get to the point where the internet will be able to carry everything that your eyes can perceive, just as when you listen to stereo, the internet can feed you, anything your ears can hear, it gets enough, enough fidelity. Whether the internet is an open space or a closed space, I'm not going to predict. It's up to us. It all decides on what we do now, on the decisions we make now. Here's another Creative Commons video from the internet-class.org. So what actually is the internet? To answer that question, I tried to come inside the internet. I came as inside the internet as I could. I'm in a room that is very intimately connected with the internet and where you can see a lot of the things that uh, make the internet what it is. So what is the internet? Let's answer that question on three different levels. First of all, the internet is a com huge computer network. It's an interconnection of computer networks all over the world that are bringing billions of people online. Billions of computers that are connected to the internet. And that network is physical. That network has a physical reality. So for example, behind me, I have these wires, right? And wires are one of the fundamental things that make the internet what it is. The internet has this physical network. It's billions of computers that are actually touching each other, that are connected using infrastructure that we've built that spans the globe. So that's one thing that the internet is. The internet is also a set of protocols. Those protocols define how computers like these that are connected to the internet 
communicate with each other to accomplish things. Just because I connect two, network, two computers together over this huge network doesn't mean that I can do anything useful or do anything interesting. Those computers need to be able to exchange data. Those computers have to be able to cooperate together to perform a lot of other really important functions. Finally, the internet is people. Uh, the internet is uh, a space that we've created, but what makes the internet so exciting is what human beings are doing with it. All the content that we've put online, how we've used the internet to change the way that we relate to each other, both in good ways and bad. How we're using the internet to change how we communicate, how we access information, how we learn things. So all of that content that's on the internet is in most part created by human beings. It's a reflection of us. And what we're doing online is also a reflection of us. You know, the internet represents this fulfillment of a deep human desire to communicate. Um, we've built a network that allows us to do exactly that. And our contribution is what we're communicating about, what we're sharing with each other, and the types of new services and new approaches to problems that we're building on top of the internet itself. So the internet is this physical network connecting billions of machines. It's protocols that allow those machines to work together. And it's people making the internet work for us to do new and exciting things. I hope this enlighten you for what the internet become into our lives and how Linux heavily contributed to our internet from our supercomputers, internet servers and the applications that connects us into the internet. So that's it for now for our Linux app, the internet. I'm Blair, your science teacher. Bye for now and see you in the next episode. And remember that science means knowing. That's why science is cool. Ciao!